I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and what you see here are little itty bitty bits of leftover food coloring from another project. I mixed some colors with the Wilton Color Right Color Performance System, which is a liquid food coloring system, and then I poured the dye out onto the fiber that I was dyeing. Then I took the residual dye that was left in these cups and added a bit more tap water. So there's no vinegar or anything in here, but what you're seeing is the residual from a teal I mixed, a brighter blue, a blue that has a tiny bit of red number three, black, and then more of a yellow green. And I thought that it could be fun to attempt to use these leftover dyes to create a more muted pastel colorway, colorway with some space dyeing techniques. In my dye pot, which still has a faint blue tinge, we started with about 10 cups of water and maybe five tablespoons of white vinegar. So it is pretty acidic, even though the total volume has been reduced. To this, I am adding some Swish Decay. This is 100% Superwash Merino. And you know, dipping it into that faint amount of blue, we got the barest, barest amount of color on here. I'm showing this because, you know, that soaked up whoops, pretty quickly because a lot of times in my dyeing videos, I will reuse dye over and over and over. And when there's a tiny bit of blue left behind, yes, that is some color. Um, you can see down here at the bottom that there is a hint more blue. But if you're adding more dye to your project anyway, um, that little bit of blue won't really make much of a difference in the hue of yarn, which is why I feel okay using a dye bath over and over. Now today is a little different. Um, I have this 100% Superwash Merino yarn in this pot, and we have our dilute food coloring that is left over from other projects. And I'm honestly curious how pastel our final yarn will end up. We already have a little bit of pastel blue, and this is slowly um, the water was still warm, which is why that blue struck so fast. But soon I will add those other colors once we start seeing a little more movement in there. That did not take very long. I am going to reduce the heat. And now I am going to start adding some of these colors. I'm going to start with this pale blue. And we've got in each of these maybe between like a quarter to a full cup of water. This blue I believe has some red number three in it, um, but I'm sort of just randomly pouring it in. And you could see that we got, you know, you could see how much color it looked like there was in the cup and just how pastel that is looking on our yarn. I think of all of the colors, that may have been the most dilute uh, for starting out. I am actually now going to shift the yarn around a bit before we add the next color. Some of these, I think, will give us a little bit more of a hue, but maybe not. Okay, there is the lighter green. And now, you know, if you look at the cup, there is really almost no color left. This is a no dye left behind type situation. So you can see the barest, barest hint of green. But if I remove our yarn from the pot, it's looking really, really clear. Um, with the high acid and the very, very limited amount of food coloring, these colors are striking quickly. Here is our black, which, funnily, that looks like a gray to me. Um, I'm curious, huh, I think it helps when I'm pouring it and it's more directly on top of the yarn itself. 
um, because that means that things really aren't spreading out very far. And again, that water oh, is looking really, really clear and we're just getting these baby, baby hints of color as I am tangling up our yarn. Hopefully not too much. All right, next, I've got our teal. This one, yeah, this one looks a bit darker. That is not as pastel, and you can see that I am um, adding it to make it a little lighter, adding it to the edge so it sort of goes over the yarn. When there's more color, adding it on top of the yarn, it'll strike so, so fast that if you want the coverage to be less, you need to really watch, I guess, how, where you pour it. Um, yeah, there was a lot of that teal. Oh, this is actually really, really fun. Okay, and then finally, I've got my last blue, and so now this one is like a deeper blue. I'm sort of moving it to the side. So you can see that the color looks a bit brighter. And I'm adding it to the water versus directly on top of the yarn. Let's add some over here. So, you know, I, I was thinking about this and I was like, okay, this is going to be space dyeing, but I was really moving it around a bit, but the colors are still striking based on where they are located in the pot. Um, and again, the amount of total color, like th those colors looked pretty vibrant, but if you want enough food coloring to get a vibrant, vibrant colored yarn, you really want your dye to look pretty opaque. If you can see through it, there's not that much dye left behind. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're clear already, and ooh, I see some red in there, but now we've got, this is sort of like a minty green and blue yarn. And honestly, at this stage, I would be comfortable removing it from the dye pot completely. Um, I think that all of the color is in the yarn. However, just to be sure and let, give it all some time to make sure things are set. I am, I've just turned off the heat of the pot. I'm gonna leave this yarn in the pot for five minutes before I remove it. I am going to remove the yarn. I get a lot of questions about how my yarn doesn't end up super, super tangled. For example, in here, I shimmy, shimmied this through the pot this does not look like an ordered skein right now. And I set a really bad example by not adding additional ties to my yarn. So how do I do it? I think in general, when I pick up my skeins, I try to pick them up by where the ties are. And if you end up with a tangled mess, um, I think it's best to do your best when you're washing it to try to keep from tangling it further, which once this cools, I'll demonstrate that. But if it is still fairly tangled, don't try to untangle it while it's wet. Um, you could stretch out the fibers and things sort of like stick together a bit more and it can just be harder. Um, I personally will wait for it to be dry and then I find it a lot easier then to get it into a reordered situation. But for now, I'm going to take this pretty pastel yarn, set it aside so it can cool, and then we can wash it. Here is our pretty pastel yarn. I have only squeezed out uh, most of the water in it, but I'm now going to show you how I wash it to prevent making an even more tangly kind of mess. So I carefully pick it up. Okay, this one actually might be pretty bad, Rebecca. Um, <laughs> I pick it up and I carefully look for the ties, which, wow, here we go, here's a tie. <laughs> this one might be pretty, pretty bad. Okay, but there, so okay, I guess you can't see. So I found the tie and I'm holding it by the tie. 
and that allows me to sort of see a separation. Um, and so then I already have it some how in this ring. And there's, if you look here, if you look closely, the skein isn't ordered. There's some yarns that are folding back and are going the wrong way. But you can sort of check this by looking at the tie and seeing where things may or may not belong. Um, and there is some disorder. There is this one random guy. Okay, I guess you do go this way. Um, and so again, once this is dry, it can be a lot easier to reorder things. So even if it isn't perfect, when I'm washing, I try to keep a hand on the skein and use my hand as a die, as a tie. So that way when I'm swirling it around in the water, it doesn't get more tangled. So I guess the two big tips are wait for the yarn to dry. And then if it is tangled, if I wasn't able to untangle it at this stage, I would have taken that yarn and sort of held it across the whole thing to keep from, I guess, twisting the strands around each other even further. But anyway, and so, you know, when I pick it up, my hand is still within this loop. And so that is how, you know, I might move my hand down it a bit so that way I can get uh, water access to all of the fibers. But either way, we have a delightful pastel skein of yarn. And what's amazing is that I see some gray from that black, um, a little bit of yellow, I think more from the yellow green, and a lot of different blues. I think overall, this looks a bit and reads a bit like a mint stick of gum or something. And there's a little bit of the brighter teal where I poured directly over the yarn, but I'm excited that we got this great pastel with leftover dye. And so here I have just some clear dish soap, um, but I'm not expecting, oops, see, always, always keeping a hand on it. I'm not expecting to see much bleeding. Oh yeah, that water is clear. Um, I think that uh, for, if you wanted to get a pastel without using leftover dye, you might, like one drop or like three or four drops of food coloring might be too much um, to get, especially if you want to get this kind of blue green. So I would recommend whether you follow the coloring recipe or what, mixing the color you want and then maybe pouring most of it out to, and let that be your leftover dye. So you're left with just a tiny, tiny bit. The nice thing is that if you're going for a pastel, less is more. Start with a little bit of dye. You can always add more and more. And so now I am going to go hang this up to dry and I will be back and I'll show you the finished dry yarn. Here is the skein of yarn directly from my drying rack. And the colors are beautiful, but it is not completely ordered yet. If you look at where one of the ties are, you can see that there's some yarn going in the wrong directions. Um, I could have attempted to fix this while it was wet, but I think that it's in general a little uh, harder. So looking at the tie, I can see, okay, this strand, oh, actually that does belong over there. You can kind of use this to tell you where strands belong and look at how they are going through the ties. Is that the, nope, that's not the only one. So if I turn it on the inside and looking over here, I see, okay, those strands look like they need to go this way. And there might be one here. Okay, so I sort of will look at one side and sort of try to get everything going the direction it should be going through the tie. And then I sort of run my hand through to the other side. So looking at this way, this one looks fairly ordered. 
Now I'm going to go to the other tie to make sure we're also looking ordered over there. And besides a little bit of crimping, this is actually looking pretty good. Um, you always need to see like where the ends are actually tied. That can be a little different. But then at this point I will snap it with my hands like so. And now we have a nice and ordered skein again. And if you have one strand that's a bit longer, you can um, sort of, whoops, um, sometimes the snapping it will help sort of everything get a bit more even. But another option is to, if there's a one really long strand somewhere, you could um, pull and tug. But that is, I guess, the way that I keep from making it super tangled. And I think the key with the washing is you know, keep a hand, let your hand be a tie. And if it is super tangled, when you go to wash, keep your hand around, um, and you can't keep your hand around half, keep your hand around the whole thing. Because if you're watching it like this, um, it's gonna get not going to get more tangled than it was already. Now let's look a little more at the color. I would say in here we have some mint green, some pale yellow, um, which is a little funny because I didn't exactly have yellow in there. Um, and if we turn it, I seem to remember seeing the barest hint of some gray. There is color all over. It's just the, the hue changes and not just the level of saturation, which does also vary. Um, but I think that the result is really, really lovely. And I know I was using leftover dyes today, but this is a example of both how much color there can be in a few drops of diluted dye left over, but also how little dye there is. You can have a cup and it can look like there's a lot of color in there. And depending on if you're letting it go over 100 grams or stay in one little spot, you could have a little bit of color or a lot of color. Um, so it's not as much the concentration of the dye as you mix, but it's also how you apply it to the yarn to get different depths of color. If you're going for a semi-solid pastel or tonal pastel, less is more. Um, <laughs> start with a tiny amount of dye, less than you think you need, because you can always layer on more color. But if you go past the pastel stage into something more saturated, it's not as easy to take a step back and remove the color again. So remember that you can always add more. Um, a paper towel is a really great way to test um, how intense the color is. Things if, when diluted can, also, can become less intense overall, but um, I think that this is great. You know what? I think that I enjoy dyeing with leftover dyes and randomly throwing it together to see what we get just as much as the experiments that I put more planning into for the Dye Pot Weekly series. If you enjoyed this video, check out the Dye Pot Weekly series to watch me plan and experiment with many different ways to apply color to yarn. Of course, there are many, many other dyeing videos and live streams on the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel, so you just should subscribe so you don't miss anything. Finally, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and if you'd like to bring home a little piece of one of my dyeing videos, check out the Chemnitz Creations Etsy store. It is full of dozens of skeins of hand-dyed yarn um, featured in my videos, both past videos and upcoming ones. Um, as soon as a video is edited and scheduled, I will frequently stick things in the shop. And you can always find the video title and publication dates in the video description. So that way, if you are interested in a yarn and want to learn a little more about it, or if you want to learn more about the yarn that you purchased from me, uh, you can, and you can go watch it me dye it for you. Thank you so much for watching.